I came to East Stroudsburg University in 1986 and rented a house on Analomic Street. And he, Sterling Strasser, and his wife Dorothy lived directly across the way. And for years, uh, I came from Manhattan, so I wasn't the one to embrace neighbors, but for years I saw cars pulling up and taking paintings away. And eventually I got to know Sterling, and, uh, and then certainly the last year of his life I saw him pretty much every day. And uh, he's a self-taught artist of national reputation, and, uh, and um, uh, you know, is uh, very impressive in his range of styles and his choice of subject matter. But the thing I liked about him most was that he was a local artist. He painted the, the streets and the, the vistas around the campus. Uh, he, uh, he embraced all the local artists around him and uh, you know, encouraged them, bought their art, promoted them to dealers, got them into museums. Um, so he was a very generous man. I see him as coming from an earlier America. He was born in 1907. Uh, before the Depression, before World War II. And so he was a very generous man. If he met you, he would just embrace you, want to know about you, bring you into his world, sell you some paintings. Uh, if you're an artist, help you uh, pursue your art. He never locked his door. The door was always open, 24-7. Uh, you could walk into his house and he'd give you a big cheery hello. Well, he had this uh, wonderful old-fashioned house uh, on Analomic Street, and um, as I said, the door's always open, and you walk in, and there's paintings everywhere. Paintings on the walls, propped up against the, you know, the walls, and he's in there painting, uh, usually, and his wife, Dorothy, would either be hooking a rug, doing hookings, uh, or doing watercolors. And um, so, uh, it was a very interesting house. There was. He made, it was, it had a wraparound veranda, but he made a sort of room around that one end of the veranda, and it had, he had all his big paintings in there. Then he had an old-fashioned ice house, and the ice house was full of paintings. Uh, and so it depended on how well you knew Sterling, whether you ever got into these spaces, uh, whether he would uh, show you the, the really good stuff, the really uh, big stuff. But I lived across the street from him, and um, he had a friend who worked at Kramer's, uh, which is like Home Depot back then. And uh, his friend would get him pieces of masonite. And he would just store them on the front porch in the open. And I would hear him at three in the morning sawing away, you know, uh, usually in the dark, just the street lamp uh, for lighting. And then he would bring it in and he would paint. And he was a very prolific artist. He could paint, he painted uh, every day. Uh, and so uh, you'd get these odd shaped things that, you know, you saw it at three in the morning, and, but they were, they were very beautiful pieces of art. And um, so you go over and, and you might want to buy it, and he'd ask his wife, Dot, what do you think? And then he'd sell it to you, and sometimes later she'd say, that was too, too little. And he said, it doesn't matter, I'll pay another one tomorrow. So unlike many artists, he, he just had this flow. Uh, and could produce a lot of art. He probably produced more florals than anyone, uh, th than anything else. And uh, uh, he would go around the gardens uh, of East Stroudsburg and, and spot flowers and, and uh, sit down and paint them. Um, there always seemed to be flowers in the house. People would bring them flowers and all, all these vases. They had a big collection of vases and if you brought them flowers, they'd give you a vase. Um, so he did florals a lot, but he also liked train stations and trains, and you know, right down East Stroudsburg. This is a, a painting of, uh, of East Stroudsburg and Crystal Street. We see the, the uh, train station there and the depot that he painted over and over again. Uh, he was inspired by circuses, you know, he would go to circuses and paint the performers, and he liked uh, the sea. Uh, he went to uh, visit the ocean for the first time, I think he said, in 1949. And he saw the waves for the first time and he was so excited he went back to the rented room and because Dorothy was in the other part, he just closed the door of the bathroom and he painted all night. Uh, just uh, scenes of waves. And then uh, he liked um, Ferris wheels. There's a lot of Ferris wheels. He liked uh, horses. Uh, 
uh, especially trotters. And he did all sorts of fruits, melons and strawberries and blueberries and raspberries. And he did breads, you know, full loaves of breads, homemade bread. Uh, so people who collected him, and there were thousands, I think, who collected him, you know, would ask, gee, do you have a Ferris wheel? Oh, do you have a giraffe, you know? Uh, some of these were very rare. Uh, and people uh, tried to get one of each kind of thing that he did. Besides the paintings, um, Gray donated some papers, uh, his papers and correspondence, some, some of his poetry. In addition, we're starting a, an oral history project. And uh, we have students with tape recorders and they're going to interview people who are living now, who knew Sterling and his wife, and uh, then we'll describe, transcribe those interviews, and they'll be the basis of uh, a biographical uh, information about Sterling. And we hope someday somebody writes, writes a book about him and his art.